Hello everyone, this is Dr. Dhiman and I welcome you all to this microprocessor tutorial series. In this video, we will learn about the memory mapped input output write and respective timing diagrams. Okay, so first of all, we will understand what is the memory mapped input output read or write machine cycles okay so then we will learn about the timing diagrams so we have already discussed about the peripheral map input output read and write instructions and we have considered some examples and we have seen the timing diagrams in this video we will learn about the memory mapped input output interfacing we will consider one example and we will learn how to draw the timing diagram here the input output devices suppose we have one microprocessor unit suppose this one is the microprocessor unit and we have one suppose input output device input or output device the communication between these two units one is the microprocessor unit another is the suppose peripheral unit it may be a data transfer from the processor to the input output device or it may be a data transfer from the input output device to the microprocessor unit when the data is transferred from the microprocessor unit to the input output device it is called as the write operation okay and when the data is read from the input output device or when the data is transferred from the input output device to the microprocessor unit then it is called as the read operation okay so these are the some basic differences here are the input output devices this one is the input output device this input output devices are assigned and identified by 16 bit memory address okay so in the case of memory map input output operations so we will consider the input output device as one of the memory unit so here the data transfer between the microprocessor and the input output devices are done using some memory related instructions suppose we have a LDA instruction suppose LDA this is the instruction for loading the memory content or the loading the input output device content into the accumulator of the microprocessor okay we have another instruction that is suppose S the the meaning of this instruction is store the content of the accumulator in the memory lo location we will consider one example so we will see in detail and in this case or in the data transfer between the microprocessor and the input output devices we will use this type of instructions and we will use some memory control signals so what are the memory control signals let me write down here m e m r this is the active flow signal and this is nothing but this is the memory read memory read control signal we have another one that is m e m w this is the memory write okay so the communication between the microprocessor and the input output devices are similar to the peripheral mapped input output technique that i have already explained in my previous videos you can find from this channel there is one playlist at the end of this video you can find from there so basic of all the units is described in those videos but here in the case of memory map input output data transfer the microprocessor considers the input output devices as if it were one of the memory location that means this input output device let me show you here this input output device will be considered as a memory unit or memory register by the processor but actually this is an input output device input or output device um, when the, we have a write instruction then we will have the out device or output device and when we have to read we have to read from the input device okay so in the case of memory map input output interfacing the microprocessor will consider the input output device as one of the memory unit so in this video we will consider one instruction for the memory map input output write instruction that is the microprocessor to the input output device the data will be transferred that is the 8 bit data will be transferred from the microprocessor unit to the input output devices okay that is the data will be transferred from the microprocessor unit to the input output device because it is a write instruction suppose this one is the instruction so what is the meaning of this instruction sta8000 
thousand eight. Here capital H is the hex code that is representing the number is represented in hex code or hexadecimal code. So the meaning of this instruction is store the content of the accumulator in the memory location eight thousand eight. This is the memory location. So in the case of memory map input output uh, interfacing, this address this address is for the input output device this address represents some input output device now let us consider some memory address respective code for this instruction suppose this instruction is stored in some memory address so let me write down here and in the right hand side let me write down here so let me write in this way so suppose we have some arbitrary memory addresses suppose it is assumed that the given instruction is stored in consecutive addresses as this instruction sta8008 as it is a 3 byte instruction therefore we will need 3 addresses okay suppose we have 2050 2051 2052 these are the 3 consecutive memory addresses and suppose for this instruction, given instruction STA8008, let me rub down these parts. Suppose for this given instruction, this STA, this will have some machine code. The machine code for this STA will be 32H. So 32 is the hex code or the, it is the opcode for this given instruction. Okay. And then we have one data that is the memory address of the input output device therefore this is a 16 bit data 8000 in hex code this is a 16 bit data each of this bit is represented by four binary bits therefore the lower order address or lower order bits that is 00 will be stored in this location second location 2051 so here we'll have 00 next we have the higher order this, this will come here okay so here we will write that is in the memory address 2052 the data is 80 okay this is the higher order address so this given instruction is stored in the consecutive memories as shown in this table okay in the memory address 2050 we have the opcode of this given instruction in the 2051 here we have the lower order address and in the 2052 this higher order address is stored now we have to execute this instruction so the instruction requires this sta instruction requires four machine cycles as shown by this given timing diagram now we are coming to the timing diagram part of this video in the first part we have to fetch the opcode see this one is the opcode fetch let me use another color this one is the opcode fetch then we have memory read another memory read machine cycle then we have the memory write machine cycle why we are concerning here with the memory read memory write because the given instruction is in memory mapped input output format okay so therefore we have already learned about the opcode fetch in the case of opcode fetch we have four t states t1 t2 t3 t4 so these are the four t states for the opcode fetch operation during the first three cycles first three t states what we have from here to here this is the read that that the processor will read the opcode from the memory unit okay next we have this t4 is for the decoding of the opcode so what is the meaning of that opcode that will decode in the fourth t state in the case of memory read that is the m2 machine cycle let me show you here for m2 this is a memory read so why this is a memory read because in the given instruction you can see here we have to read the given instruction so first of all we have to read this data because in the second location we have 00, zero. so we have to read this data this 00, zero will be read in the second machine cycle so here you can see this 2051 in this address we have stored the data 008 this is the second byte of this given instruction okay so here we have this 51 this is the lower order address of this 
2051 so this will be stored here and here you can observe that a15 to a0 here we have shown the entire address bus a15 to a0 this is the entire address bus of the 8085 microprocessor unit okay so during this second machine cycle that is m2 the memory read operation will be done so therefore in the first clock cycle we have in the first t state we have here the early signal is high therefore the this ad7 to ad0 this is the multiplex address data bus therefore it will be working as a address bus it will store the lower order address and as we have represented here a15 to a0 therefore we have we have written here 2050 this is a 16 bit address therefore we have written here 2051 this 16 bit address now now here we can see this is a memory read instruction therefore the read bar signal this is the active low signal therefore during the second byte that is 00 here we can see in the 2051 location the data is 00 this one is the data therefore this data will be loaded into this data bus here so during the read operation of this lower order data that is 00 the read bar signal will go low here because this is an active low signal and in this second machine cycle we can see this is the memory read operation as it is a read operation therefore the write bar signal this is also active low signal this is also active low signal they both are high for this entire period similarly for the third machine cycle also let us consider now here this is the third machine cycle we have another memory read why there is a third memory read because this given instruction sta8008 this is a three byte instruction therefore for reading this instruction we need three clock cycles then only we can perform the write operation input output write operation sta this will store the content of the accumulator into this given memory location so the memory location is 8000 here so first of all the processor needs three machine cycles for understanding or for loading the various parameters related to this given instruction in the third machine cycle also that is m3 we have access the address to 052 and we have loaded the data that is the 80 okay 80 is the higher order address values this one is the 80 this is the third clock cycle we have read this data that is the instruction is stored in the memory addresses these are the memory addresses let me show you here these are the memory addresses and from this memory addresses we need three machine cycles for reading this instruction therefore in the first machine cycle we have fetched the data in the second machine cycle we have read the lower order address bits in the third machine cycle we have read the higher order address bits here also similar to the previous cases the read bar signal will go here when the data 88 data is transferred so now let us come to our main discussion point in this video that is the input output write that is the memory mapped input output we have the data now we have the address now that is the 8000 8000 h this is the address of that input output device okay io device address therefore in this address now we have to write the content of the accumulator so whatever be the data available in the content of the accumulator we have to transfer the data through the address data multiplex bus here we can see this is the address data multiplex bus therefore this data will be transferred in the second and the third t states okay in the first t state we have to consider the 80,000 h that is the address here we have considered a15 to a0 therefore we have written the entire 16 bit address okay and the lower order address will be stored here in this multiplex address data bus okay and during the first clock cycle as this address data multiplex bus is working as a address bus therefore this ALA signal is high here and during the first clock cycle and during the second t state we have a low signal in the early early therefore this address data multiplex bus will be working as a data bus in this period we have to transfer the data for transferring the data what we have to do we have to now give the right bar signal that is this is the signal right bar signal this is the active low signal therefore it must go low during this period to indicate this is a write instruction okay similarly we have a memory write bar signal so this signal is again low here for this fourth machine cycle 
so here you can see when the signals write bar signal and the memory write bar signal these are active low signals when this has a zero value the data will be transferred we have selected the input output device through this address of that input output device this is a 16 bit address we have selected that input output device through this 8008 and the data will be transferred to that input output device because we have shown here the signal goes low the right bar signal as well as the memory right bar signal that these are the active low signals these are low therefore the microprocessor will transfer the accumulator data into this input output device of which the address is given by this 8008 or 8000 in hex code so this is all about the timing diagram for the memory map input output write machine cycle we have considered all the machine cycle the opcode fetch, memory read, memory read, and memory write. We need four machine cycles for executing these instructions. So I hope you are benefited from this video. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. If you have any question, please put it in the comment section below. Thank you.